this is okay. So I can just proceed from there. So those are the four components of type series, but we have written up to where? We have written up to signal change. Season operation is what we are writing. So let's write season operation there. Say, this is the changes in the time series. Changes in the time series, which are attributed. They are the changes in the time series, which are attributed to short-term factors which are attributed to short-term factors such as weather conditions which are attributed to short-term factors such as weather conditions so basically what we mean is that sometimes the sales of the company or the profits they can increase depending with a particular season. For example, during this winter season, you'll find those companies selling the heavy clothes, their sales will increase, hence their profits. There is a time when it will come, their sales will go down because of this particular season. When it's very hot, we don't need to put on those warm clothes. So the season operations they affect the company in a profit or their sales. Then we go to number next, number three, cyclical variations. Cyclical variations. I know sometimes when you're doing your entrepreneurship, you must have covered what you call the business cycle. Remember the stages of a business cycle? Because this one is attributed to those uh, to the business cycle. Business cycle you use uh, to have the stages of business cycle where you do this diagram, uh, it looks like that. Then he said, whenever you start a business, during this period, you are trying to recover your capital, as you call the period, the recovery period. Then it reaches up. This is the time when at least the sales or the profits are increasing. Then it reaches a time your sales are at boom. You are making up no more sales or they are at peak. So that is the new period. Then there is a time again they can start reducing. And this is what you call the recession. This is only for those who are in class. Those who never work for any class, it's very hard to remember these four stages. Then the last one is here, where the company is almost making losses. Then it is as an individual, when you almost make a loss, you are seriously depressed. And this was the depression. So, the cycle cooperation they are associated with the performance of an economy uh, or of a business. So, we can just put it right that to say these are the changes in time series which are attributed to business cycle. These are the changes in time series which are attributed to business cycle or performance of an economy which are attributed to business cycle or performance of an economy we go to the last one which is erratic occurrences erratic occurrences or the irregular occurrences or the random occurrences so they can be called erratic occurrences Irregular currencies or random currencies. Then you can just write and say these are the changes in time series. These are the changes in time series. These are the changes in time series which are normally unpredictable, which are normally unpredictable or uncontrollable which are normally unpredictable or uncontrollable e.g. flood so you don't know when it will rain by the way so, so you can't predict of late, it can rain any time comma earthquake no earthquake can affect your business comma sickness Uh, you 
remember the COVID, the way it has affected many, many businesses. Eh? So they also affect the company profits. So those are the four components of time series. We have talked about the circular trend, system numeration, cycle operations, and relative finance. When we are doing computations, we shall be working with these two. These ones are predictable. The reason is why we shall not incorporate cycle correlation upon analytic occurrences, they are unpredictable. So a examiner can ask well, the reasons why the cycle correlations and the relative occurrences they are not in what during the workings uh, in a time series problem. The reason is because they are unpredictable. You cannot know when the COVID next COVID will come, or you cannot know when the earth will affect the business, and due to that, you cannot do the workings uh, using the tool. Also, you don't know if it's a business when it will be at boom, when it will be at recession, when it has to be depression. So that is like one of those are the reasons. Then from there, allow me to go to the next concept. Decomposition models is the next concept there. We need to cover decomposition models. So we have decomposition models. So remember, when those four components they are put together, or when the four are put together, they make the components. To separate them is to decompose. So I'll write that and say, these are the models used to separate. These are the models used to separate various components of time series. These are the models used to separate various components of time series, various components of time series. So let's just uh, say there are two, there are two decomposition models, there are two decomposition models, then I can have number one here, additive model for the one, addition, additive model. Then number two, we have multiplicative, multiplicative model. So let's start explaining the additive model. We start explaining what is additive model. Then you can write and say, this is a decomposition model used where this is a decomposition model, this is a decomposition model used where the component of time series, this is a decomposition model used where the components of time series are independent of one another used where the components of time series are independent of one another where the components of time series are independent of one another so we proceed so we can just, then after saying where the components of time series are independent of one another, you, you write y is equal to t plus s. So that is the formula we should be working with. Where this y, y is the actual time series. This t is what is the trend. The S is the secular season operation, sorry. Season. Seasonal operations. Right, so, so in an exam, you'll be given this Y, is the actual data given. The T is the trend, it is a formula to get the value for T. The step First step in time series is determination of the trend values. So when you have y, you are given y, you have t, you have determined. How will you get this s? This is an operation. 
S will be equal to what? Y minus T. So remember that. Then we can go to number two. A uh, multiplicative model. Multiplicative model. Then you write and say this is a decomposition model. This is a decomposition model used where? This is a decomposition model used where the component of times release. This is a decomposition model used where the components of time series, where the components of time series are dependent on one another. Are dependent on one another. Then you write there y is equal to t times s. So if you have y and you have t, how do you get your S if you're using the multiplicative model? S is equal to Y over T. So that is what I wanted you to get. Then from there, the last theory part of this is developing trends. Developing trends, values. Then we can uh, do a particular question. Developing trend values. Then you can write and say, regardless of the decomposition model, regardless of the decomposition model used, regardless of the decomposition model used, the first step. The first step in time series problem or analysis. The first step in time series problem stroke analysis is determination. So the first step in time series analysis stroke problem is determination of trend values is determination of trend values. Most of them you say, the following are the methods used to develop trend values. The following are the methods used to develop trend values. Number one, moving averages method. Moving averages method. Moving in this method, we have number two or number B, least squares, least squares, least squares, which is the simple regression analysis method. Regression analysis method. Then the last one is exponential smoothing. Exponential, exponential smoothing, exponential smoothing method, exponential smoothing method. So these are the three methods used to come up with the trend values. The three methods used to come up with the trend values. And there's nothing much now we can look at the first method, moving averages. So that is the one we can cover in not today's lesson. That is what we can cover in not today's lesson. So number is this is the topic is time series. And now I am doing the question paper and get question paper which we do using the moving apparatus. So you can just one statement, just a statement to explain and say this is a method used to develop, this is a method used to develop the trend values, this is a method 
used to develop the trend values where averages of data, where averages of data is determined moving downwards. Where averages of data is determined moving downwards is determined moving downwards. So that is uh, that is it.